About 400 years ago, there occurred a tremendous change in human thinking called the scientific revolution. Before that, people believed blindly in superstitions. They thought that disease, floods, earthquakes, other natural calamities were punishments from above. But after the scientific revolution, they knew that these could be understood as physical phenomena using the power of the human mind. This is what gave birth to modern science and to our ability to change the world as we want it. But the question before us now is, why did the scientific revolution take place in Europe and not elsewhere? One reason that is commonly heard is that Europe had very great scientists. People like Galileo Galilei, the Italian, or Isaac Newton, the Englishman, who understood the nature of motion. They were able to figure out the motion of the planets. Then there was Lavoisier, the Frenchman, who discovered oxygen and the reason why things burn. He was one of the founders of modern chemistry. But Islamic civilization also had very great minds. In fact, between the 9th and the 13th centuries, just about the only people who were doing very good science were Muslims. There were men like Al-Haytham, whose book Kitab al-Manazir, or Book of Optics, was the standard text for centuries after that. Or Ibn Sina, Avicenna, whose Canon on Medicine, Qanun al-Tib, was the standard treatise on medicine. Then there was Javer ibn Hayyan, whose discoveries in chemistry, experiments in sublimation, evaporation, distillation, compounds, were referred to by scientists hundreds of years later. Other civilizations also have had very smart people. The Hindus, for example, are extremely proud of Aryabhata, a mathematician who first wrote down the tables of sines and cosines, invented ways of solving algebraic equations, and whose work in mathematical astronomy was of such high caliber that today there's a spacecraft that's named after him. Then there was Bhaskara, who actually invented a kind of differential calculus that was to be invented much later by Newton and Leibniz. And of course, the Chinese have their scientific heroes. They were the first to invent gunpowder, the compass, the making of paper, printing. But for all that, it was not the Muslims, Hindus or Chinese who brought about the scientific revolution. It was the Europeans. Now, that is so difficult to understand because, after all, between the 5th and the 15th century, that's 1,000 years, Europe was sunk in the Dark Ages. These were times when there was a ban on human inquiry, where witches were burnt at the stake and believed to have caused storms and plagues. This was a time when thousands of people had been tortured to death by the church. It was one of the most gloomy periods of humankind. So how did Europe become the very center of the scientific revolution? How is it that the Europeans were able to break the shackles of the mind and bring in a period of enlightenment? After all, good science had been done by many individual scientists in many different civilizations? I think the answer lies in three things. First, the works of science had persuaded a very large number of people that not just this phenomenon or that phenomenon, but everything that we see around us in our world can be understood using reason using the power of science itself. And so this was very different from, let's say, understanding how lenses behave or how bodies fall or this or that. It was a comprehensive view of the world. 
Very important to this was the French philosopher René Descartes. He argued that any problem, every problem, must first be broken down to its parts and each part looked at separately. Descartes argued that the human body is like a machine and has different parts to it, each of which can be understood separately. So, for example, the arm is a lever. The heart is a pump that circulates blood around the body. The liver is a filter and so forth. And in this way, the superstitions, the fears that had surrounded what humans are, their bodies are, slowly went away. The second important reason why the scientific revolution happened in Europe was that the battle between religion and reason was slowly won in favor of logic, reason, rationality. This didn't mean that people of faith stopped believing. Certainly Newton was a very religious man and Descartes believed in God too. But now if you wanted an explanation for physical phenomena, you did not look to religion, you looked to science. That meant that you also developed the ability to question and to ask repeatedly, why this, why that, why that? To conclude, men and women of exceptional scientific achievement have existed in virtually every culture. But that's really not very surprising because if you look at our genetic inheritance, there's a bell curve out there and at the very extremes of the bell curve, you will find minds of exceptional talent, perhaps of genius. And so it's not surprising that every civilization has produced such wonderful people. But that doesn't mean you're going to have a scientific culture. A scientific culture can only exist if there's acceptance of the scientific method, which means giving precedence to experimentation, reason, logic over matters of faith. But then why did this intellectual transformation come about in Europe? Because after all, genetically, they're like everybody else. That's a difficult question. Perhaps it's got to do with historical accident. Perhaps there are different, deeper reasons, and I'd really like to know them.